Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and welcome to this Bergeron Briefs episode. Uh, today, we are talking with my friend Scott Owen from Cornerstone Bank about an issue or a part, or a, a solution to an issue that comes up with my elder law clients all the time. As folks know, um, I always talk about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. The joke is, if you you know if you can get the joke, you're old enough to be my client. And and and. And their goal, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard and ideally leave as much as they can to their kids, not to the nursing home, not to the government, to their kids. Um, but what yeah. often comes up for my folks, you know, is you get older and you got a house and you kill yourself to pay off the mortgage, right? Or maybe there's a small mortgage left. Um, but you don't have a lot of money. You're on a fixed income. Now you're getting Social Security and pension. You got a little bit of cash, but you got a house and your goal is yeah. to stay in your house forever, but it's a house and houses are expensive. You know, stuff happens with a house. It's not $5, it's a thousand here, it's 10,000 there. And so you're trying to figure out that. And you're also trying to figure out as you get older, you know, you never, never, never want to go to a nursing home, which means you want to stay in that home. And it may be that there are some home things that you need to do to make that home safer for you, right? So they yeah. tell my clients, you know, you can, you can live in your home for a long time and just don't fall down. You know, do not fall down, right? Um, it, or you may just need some help. You may just need some personal help and you don't have the kind of savings, you know, to deal with that personal help. So in all of those issues, I often tell people, I know you saved forever and you really want to leave the house to the kids, but you want to stay in your house until you die. So how do you do that? Yep. And so I asked Scott to come on and talk about those issues. So Scott, can you just tell us a little bit about um, you know, you and Cornerstone Bank and how the two of you ended up being connected uh, and sure. let's so, talk a little bit about those issues. Okay. Yeah. So again, like Arthur said, my name is Scott Allen. I'm the executive vice president of retail lending at Cornerstone Bank. Uh, I, I've been with the bank for a little over 11 years. You know, Cornerstone Bank was uh, derived from a merger between Spencer Bank and Southbridge Savings Bank. Uh, I've been in the financial services industry for over 30 years. I work for larger institutions, uh, small institutions in the Midwest, on the East Coast. So I have a broad range of uh, experience and exposure to uh, all types of financial issues. Um, you know, uh, what, what you're talking about with the home equity, um, it, it's a big product right now for us. And we've seen a very big uptick in home equity lending really is around 2021 because interest rates dropped. Um, homes appreciated, you know, through the roof. So there's this wealth of available funds and equity. And, you know, speaking to, you know, your type of clients, qualifying for that and be able to getting that, um, it can definitely get done and it's easy to do, but there are a little bit of nuances to it, which we can talk about today, Art. And that's, and then I kind of, that's what I'd like to do. So, you know, think, think about, Say, so I'm Frank and Mary, and I'm trying to weigh my options in, in, in yep. that situation. I have the house, I have a little bit of extra cash, but what I really want in, 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 in this case, which I hope and I try to make the typical case, it's not an emergency yet. It's not yep. an emergency yet. I'm not, I don't need a check for $100,000 tomorrow, you know, but I, want to, but I want to sleep well at night. I tell my clients, you get to our age, you know, and fame and fortune has passed us by. You just want to get a good night's sleep, right? So yeah. I want to, and it's going to help me sleep knowing that I can, I think about these possibilities, you know, what if the roof goes on the house and what if I need a septic system or, or what if I need, I am personally more disabled and therefore either need to change the house to add, add things, you know, to add, whether it is something to, to get me to the second floor or, or lights or whatever, or I need some care at home. Uh, how can I how can I sleep better at night? Yeah, and and that's with obtaining a home equity line of credit. And ideally, they should be thinking about this before they retire. During their years of you know higher income, it'll be much easier for them to qualify. But let's say they've already retired and they're on that fixed income, whether it's pension, Social Security, we can still qualify them, but we have to qualify them off of that new income stream. So it can still get done, but we have to look at uh, really their ability to pay it back. But the beauty of, of, of those emergencies and sleeping well at night is having that home equity line of credit in place because you only will have to pay it back when you utilize it. So it's that flexibility 
and be able to access those emergency funds when you need it is really the main driver why you, sh you should have a home equity in retirement. So, so can you talk to, talk to me or talk to us? It is now, you know, it's August of 2023 and the rates have gone up, you know, and, and, and so can you just talk to talk a little bit about if a person came in, say they've got their house and it's worth $500,000, not an unusual house anymore, right? $500,000, no mortgage, there's Frank and Mary, they've got their, you know, and he's getting social security of a couple thousand, she's getting half of his, so she's getting a thousand, so they get an income of about $3,000 a month. And once again, what I'm telling you, I've, you've heard a jillion times, you know, in these kind of <laughs> variations, right? Can, can you just kind of walk it, walk Frank and Mary through what the process would be that the, that the bank would use if they came in to kind of analyze um, what what their what they, what might be available to them, and then if they wanted to, to to go through with this and use what what I always remember these these used to be called home improvement loans or whatever, and I keep thinking of home equity lines of credit or HELOCs, right? But if they want to be if they want to be accessing that, what are they going to need to go through to do that? How are we going to figure out how much they could afford to get as a line of credit? I always tell people. But what the, this is a social, this is like a, this is a credit card that's supported by a mortgage, you know? Correct. So how big Correct. a credit card and you got a credit card limit, it's a credit card, right? So Correct. how much credit can you get and what are you going to have to go through in order to get it in terms of um, uh, upfront costs and closing costs and any of this jazz? And then down the line, how's that going to work? Sure. You know, how long does the line of credit run for? When, it, you know, when if ever does this have to get paid off, you know? Because yeah. often people are comparing this to like a reverse mortgage. So you're saying, you know, no. you know, am I, which, where am I going? So, and I know you're, 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 you're shaking your head, but that, that's why I want you to understand how, why they should be coming to that conclusion. Sure. They, they would simply, you know, come into one of our local branches. We would sit down with them take maybe 15, 20 minutes and spill out a simple application. Then getting into the qualification process, it's really looking at their credit, which we're assuming is typically always very, very good. Um, how much equity they have a ton of equity and then we'll look at what their income is you know pay stubs uh, um, social security pension uh, have they been taking any draws out of their investment accounts and then based on all those characteristics we would determine how much they would be eligible for and the mechanics of the HELOC is there's a draw period and a repayment period and the draw period is typically around 10 years where they can access those funds and draw it down and typically, most lenders, there is no fee if you don't utilize it. All lenders are different. Um, and that, that payment is typically an interest-only payment, which is tied to prime. And granted, prime has gone up. But again, you're only going to pay, and it's only interest-only payments during the draw period. And it's only interest-only payments on the money that you've used, not the entire amount of the line of credit. Right? Exactly. Only amount you use. So you want, really want to think about, you know, it's not be, to be used as an income stream. It's really for you know home improvements emergencies things like that or you want to help your kids out with a down payment or something major or significant um yeah. and typically the, there's a margin tied to it whether it's prime plus or prime minus you know prime minus a half every lender is different and there's a typically a flow rate which is around three or four percent um and and, and if, it, once again if i were walking in today and you know once again this is august of 2023 if i were walking in today about what would that rate look like? About well, for us, we're prime minus and a half, so that would be eight percent. I get it. It's prime is eight and a half. Um, but we also have a, a feature where once you open the home equity line of credit, you can take a fixed rate advance and lock that in for a period of time, whether it's five, ten, or fifteen years. But you're starting to pay that back in an amortizing payment. But the advantage of that is it's a fixed payment. And a lower interest. Rate. I see. I see. So, so, so these, when when I think about HELOC, I'm thinking about something that's more kind of cut and dry. But you're telling me that at the, at Cornerstone, because you're doing a lot of this stuff, you're also looking at different variations on that theme, really in order Correct. to accommodate what the uh, what the customer is, is looking for, right? Exactly. And, and, and then you get into and you get into the repayment period. That's typically a little bit longer than the draw period. Yeah. But at that point in time, you can no longer draw on the funds. The repayment period runs from anywhere from 10, 15. I've seen some as far as 20. And that payment is really an amortizing payment. So you're starting to pay back principal and interest. And this is a good point to remember for 
you know, Frank and Mary, that payment should be or will be significantly higher in the interest only payment, right? Of course, because now you're paying back principal. So during that qualification process up front, we try to qualify them to avoid what we call payment shock, right? We don't want to be shocked by a large payment if you have to pay all that back over the repayment period. So that's why it's important. we want to put them in, you know, the, the right credit limit, knowing they have the ability to pay it back. And, and when you're and when you're doing that kind of qualification, is your analysis of ability to repay based on the the ability to repay the interest only or or be on the ability to pay if they if they start in that at that point where they're actually having to repay the principal? Yeah, we we try we look at it as far as if they drew the entire credit limit out. Yeah. And that payment during the repayment period. So we, we are qualifying that much higher than the interest only payment. Um, and most lenders do that and they should do that, right? Cause that's, you don't right. want to put no, them in a situation, you know, that you may, want to make sure. That, yeah. that may, it, and I guess from my, from Frank and Mary's perspective, therefore, right? If they were, if they were doing this, that, you know, they, they, re, they re, might really want to be looking at, once again, how, how old they are when they do this, because you're telling me that in the typical package, You've got interest only for ten years, and then that other thing kicks in, and you and 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 you're saying to yourself, "Well, I don't want this other thing to be kicking in, and I'm like ninety years old, and I've got like and now I'm really because the older you get, the more you're kind of stressed in terms of these finances, yes. right? But I suppose yeah. that and that makes sense to look at that up front, right? So the, it, so the, it does, and you know the, the you know you are accumulating debt, and like you said, it is a basically simplistically a credit card tied to your home. And you want to make sure you use it wisely. And, um, you know, it, it's a better tool than, say, pulling down funds from your investment accounts, right? Especially in a down market, you know, you're losing, um, you know, wealth accumulation by pulling those funds out. Right. And it's better off utilizing that HELOC. And then when the market turns around, then maybe utilizing those funds to pay back the HELOC. And by not drawing into your investment accounts, you, you're avoiding maybe a tax implication, right? Because so, that's the other issue. Most of you know, most of these folks, you've got you know, my, my classic folks. You've got a house, and you paid off the mortgage, and you've got some tax deferred. You've got a you've got a four hundred one k that turned into an IRA. You you've got some tax deferred. So, the, one of the other advantages I tell people of doing doing the the HELOC is that you're not having to pay income tax on those reserve funds at this point. You may want to kind of save those for later on you, and you just and, and you know once again ideally people say yeah but then what if i die and i would say, say well that solves all the problems dying is not the problem you know li living well until you die is the problem yes. right dying yeah. solves all issues right so yeah. can, can you just also just talk a little bit about what's getting they walked in the door and they're thinking about this yeah. what's it going to cost them to to do this and is it yeah. related to the amount that they're borrowing because, because once again, when they're trying to compare apples and apples, they, you know, they're, they're looking at this with versus a reverse mortgage, where, the, where the, I tell people the upfront costs are really, really high. So you, you need to oh, really be absolutely. comparing these, right? Yeah. And, and for us, and, and really most lenders, there are no upfront fees for the home equity line of credit, unless you get into a, a much larger credit limit request or a higher LTV, yeah. then yeah, there might be some costs associated, but it, it's it's marginal compared to especially our first mortgage or doing a full first mortgage refinance. Okay. Uh, so it, there, and there isn't a kind of a, an expected automatic fee, like a point or a percent or nope. two, 2%. Percent, I say yeah, we, we majority of our HELOCs, there are no fees to take it out. Right. And then, and then I know that also I'll, I tend to be the, one of the biggest fees on this. The, 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 the attorneys tend to be big fees when it's, <laughs> when it's a first mortgage, right? Right. It's been my experience that so that's much that's a much lower that's much lower because a lot of that is handled internally when it's a HELOC or a second mortgage. It is. We we don't get full title insurance. We get a property rundown title report. Uh, you know, rarely do we have to get a full appraisal. Um, it's typically just a uh, automated valuation, um, right. very quick. You know, typically we close them with in less than thirty days. It's really a, a very simple process. For most applicants, of course, you get into the the larger requests or more complicated borrowers. Um, it might be a little more, more more to it, but really not much more. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's pretty so, straightforward. So yeah, 
I really appreciate you doing, you know, taking the time to do this. I think that these are these are questions that folks come up with all the time. And we'll have a slide that we'd ask, we'll ask you to, you know, to give us with your, your contact information sure. uh, or, or the contact information for the bank, you know, whoever they should be calling. But I just I just like you to leave people with. So if there are questions, who should they, what is the number? Who should they call? Who should they talk to? Right. Yeah, they can reach out to me directly. Uh, and uh, my phone number is 774-230-0945. Or if you go to our website, cornerstonebank.com, um, you can search for our lenders and any of our mortgage loan officers, anybody in our branch can help you with this product. Um, it, it's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, you know, going to a local lender that live and works where, where you live, I think is beneficial. Uh, my suggestion is to show shop around a little bit. Not all key locks are traded equal. Um, they're, they're very similar in nature, but they, they can vary from um, fees, costs, um, interest rates. Um, so it's important to really investigate those and, and, and check them out. And I think key locks are great products. You know, it, I, I, I encourage everybody to have one, but they have to be used responsibly uh, and carefully uh, because you, you don't want to use it as an ATM, so to speak. It, it is emergency vehicle to help you out when needed. And Scott, and, and, and I know you're, you're referring it to as an emergency vehicle, but to me, it's a sleep well at night vehicle. It's yes. the vehicle that you want to use before the emergency, right? So yeah. you just know that if there's an emergency, you're not going through anything. You're just, you know, writing a check. You know, you just, and, 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 and so I really appreciate you taking all this time, you know, and, and, and I hope that, that, uh, that uh, if folks have got questions, folks, Folks, this is something you have to do. You, right. If you're Frank and Mary, if you want to stay at home, if you've got limited other savings, which is most people's situation, you need to make sure that your house is available. And I know you don't want to take use the money because you want to leave it all to your kids. But what they're going to tell you is, Ma, look, and Dad, you, you saved that money. This is your money. Take care of yourself, right? And so this is an important tool for you. So thank you very much, Scott. I really appreciate it. And, awesome. and, and folks, I hope you, you know, tune into our, on, on our YouTube channel. You can find any number of these Bergeron briefs as well as other seminars that we do on other facets of elder law, other facets of elder law. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Arthur.